live, starting a half hour late, technical difficulties, naked children running in the room, uh, not totally naked, but naked enough that it's inappropriate for Instagram. Just trying to listen to this calm record. And we're gonna talk about difficulties that you might have working from home. Um, Cause a lot of people struggle with working from home. And uh, I got an email from someone that was talking about this issue. So that's what we're gonna cover. I wanna give it a minute to jump into this. And then uh, we're gonna talk about some strategies for working from home, for maintaining motivation and all that other stuff. And then here's this calm record. Boom. I think this is like 1996 maybe. My theory is it's members of um, Mohinder and Indian Summer. You know, kind of classic, almost avant-garde uh, California hardcore bands. Kind of sludgy, sort of cool. Shoegazy, perhaps. I have a feeling that this record deserves to be in the pile of stuff that we're selling. Paying the rent off of records. And off of the old graphics design. Hmm. So we're gonna, if you're watching this after the fact, I'm gonna wait a couple minutes for, um, some people to show up, especially hoping the person who sent this question in shows up, because it'd be cool to be able to address their concerns. God, I'd love it if I could make this thing work so it was brighter, but stood up straight. I don't know. My wife Kim bought me this nice little like ring light, but it right in my eyes, super whack, not her fault. But it'd be so useful if I see it's gonna be closer. So let's do that. Let's get let's get uncomfortably close. Let's make it like one of those Norm McDonald videos. That dude gets real close. It could turn out no one wants to wants me to play records, and that's why um it's a ghost town. I'm so distracted by this freaking thing. It's a cool record, but I, I can't see listening to it too much, you know? Another episode, World's Worst Radio Show. That part's cool. This is a big tune. Frozen. Is it frozen on my side or frozen on your side? It's probably frozen on your side, Kim. Let's track one. Let's see what happens. No visual. Well, thanks for the love, Kim. Hopefully, there's a visual now. I don't know. This record's okay. I don't have a. I don't have a strong feeling on it. At the time, it was a big deal, but I think it's just because it was hard to get.
Gonna throw on the, eight, the second side. So we're waiting for some people to show up. We're gonna kind of see what's cracking here. But we did get two questions today, so that's cool. Let me tell you. This is cool. this one long song on the b-side but we're gonna we're gonna turn that record off okay let's put this bad boy away and let's get into it one two bits of news new video the law of successive ease is on my personal youtube mva joshua you can go check that out uh it is about my theory that all creative projects should get easier as they progress meaning that the first day you work on the project should be way harder than the last day that you shouldn't be stressing out at the last minute. You shouldn't be pulling overnighters at the last minute. And that ideally you shouldn't be delivering wet paintings to a gallery. And then the other thing that is out is episode 98 of the MVA studio vlog that covers three ways that you're losing clients. If you're a designer, photographer, anybody that does a, a kind of service consultancy type thing three ways that you're losing clients and it also goes into the art of learning and teaching typography the importance of experimentation the value of having an interesting process and why it is okay to be an actual graphic designer up to the day you die and not be the global vice senior president of brand or whatever the hell it is that people want to do we're going to pull out our next record in case we ever decide to play it but i want to get it into now why is it that people have a hard time working from home why is it hard to get things done first and foremost there's a really obvious level of why it's hard to work from home and that is because when you're at work someone is usually breathing down your throat uh, or breathing down your neck <laughs> mixed in my metaphors so you have somebody breathing down your neck and because of that there's this sort of constant fear you might not be worried about them spying on you but there's just you have to keep up appearances your computer's supposed to have the right stuff loading on it you know if you're doing other stuff like if you're a student there's certain social pressures that make it really easy to maintain uh, working like if you're in a computer lab and then you kind of provide social proof by doing work so those are a couple of like the really gross levels gross meaning unbelievably obvious levels of why you can get stuff done 
at work and not at home. There's kind of two aspects to this that need to be addressed. The first one is gonna be this, the really sort of classic leverage issue. You have to get leverage over yourself to make sure that you're doing the things that you need to do. A really easy way to do that is to, one, fantasize about what will go wrong if you don't do the thing. Like, let's do it like this, right? Let's say what you're doing is you're procrastinating kind of all day and then you freak out at night and you do the work. So you're not blowing deadlines, but you're not doing the work at an appropriate time because you sit down and work at your computer and you just kind of blow it and you procrastinate. And then you end up with this situation where you have to get the work done. So maybe you're doing weird stuff like you're actually, you're working at night on stuff you would never normally have to work at night on because you would get it done during the day at work. But this newfound level of freedom means that you kind of don't have to do it. And maybe the work is boring. In general, I'm gonna assume that one of the big issues for making this switch and not doing anything is because the work is somewhat boring. With that said, how do you address that? You sort of future visualize the worst case scenario if you continue to do what you're doing. So I get up from my computer, I keep walking away or I keep watching YouTube videos or I keep going for walks or whatever it is I'm doing. And I used to do this so badly, shockingly badly, the, the way that I was about this kind of stuff. And then your plan is you're gonna end up making up for it at 8 p.m. or 6 p.m. or whatever. Matthew Cooley, what's up? Before I um jump any further into this, Actually, you're probably good at working from home, right? You'd have to be. It would be shocking if you were bad at working from home. You should be ashamed of yourself if you're bad at working from home. <laughs> you are bad at it. All right, good, then this might be helpful to you. So my number one way to motivate yourself, if it's like low level work maybe, actually if it's any work, but you know you have to do it, is to, to do nightmare fantasy situations of what happens if you don't do it when it needs to be done. So you put it off right now when it's the appropriate moment to do it. What could go wrong? Maybe your plan is to now do it at eight o'clock at night after dinner. But what if your internet goes out? You get distracted by some other crap up until your internet goes out. Your internet goes out, you spend all this time trying to fix it, you can't get it fixed. It's too late to call a friend to go work at their house and violate quarantine land. So now you can't deliver on the deadline, you get fired. If you get fired, what else happens? You're homeless, you die. And then you put it in your head that if I don't do this, I'm homeless and I die. So one way. The second way, slightly more fun way, is to reward yourself for doing the work. So that could take on a ton of forms. It could be simply that you don't get lunch until you've done an appropriate amount of work, reached a certain deadline or, or got a couple things off the to-do list. It could be that you don't get to watch YouTube videos. It could be that if you do this, you get to go for a walk. But basically the stuff that you use to procrastinate you turn into a reward for doing the things that you need to be doing. All of this works much better if you are super clear about what it is that you need to be doing at any given moment. If you can't turn it into a to-do, or if your to-do is an amorphous thing, like, um, would be a good example. Design website is a thing that sounds like a to-do and is not actually a to-do, because it's got 70,000 micro projects that fall under the umbrella of it. If you set that as a to-do, you have no idea when you can stop or how to reward yourself. The to-dos need to be hyper actionable. They need to be a thing that if you told me what you had to do, I could visualize what it would look like when you were doing it. But if you tell me you're designing a website, I don't know if that means uh, actually sketching. I don't know if that means programming. I don't know if that means doing visual research. I don't know if that means photo editing. I got no idea what that means. So rewarding yourself, it's really critical that you understand what it is you're doing and that you understand what the reward is. I do this for myself. Uh, actually, I do it instinctively because I keep a to-do list of other things I could do anyway. So that way, uh, I'm really pretty good about, let's see, my computer. 
is right there. I'm really good about coming down here and jumping right into it, right at nine and knocking out whatever needs to be done, which then opens up time that if there's 10 minutes here or 20 minutes there, I can jump into some other thing and I can do something else that's fun or I can just go upstairs and visit the kids or something. And I can do it guilt free and without being stressed. Even what I'm doing right now from four to five is a reward for hustling on work to make sure that I've cleared out my calendar to where I can squeeze this in. And then on top of that, I have my email open. So if something comes up and it matters, I can jump right back into it. At the same time, if something comes up, I can still do this and then I can go do that thing at five from five to six. And there's nothing unexpected or nothing surprising. So that's kind of level two. You can reward yourself and you can do it in a variety of means or fashion. The last one, which is kind of a bigger fish to fry, is to get your head wrapped around all the things that you actually have to do, be hyper clear about them and hyper clear about what actions need to happen on each of them. I was hearing little sounds like children sneaking around that's often happening up in this piece. For harder work, I think it's hyper important to be very clear about what the thing is that you need to be doing now or the first thing that you need to do in the morning. And I think one of the biggest forms of procrastination simply comes from not being clear about what it is that you need to be doing. So you're clear about what project you might need to do, but you're not clear on what the thing is. And because of that, it requires all this brain power just to jump into it. Design the website is a great example. What, what does that mean? I haven't been working on music during the day, but if that were on my to-do list, the to-do list would never say work on music. You know, the to-do list for today said stuff like, write the description for this YouTube video. It said, shoot the intro for that video. If so, if I were gonna work on music, my to-do list would be like, review this song, or it would be play. Play would mean I get to start a new song and I don't need to worry about a deliverable. I just need to spend a certain amount of time screwing around. That's hyper clear though. There's nothing I need to do in that instance. It literally means at 9.30, grab the phone, make a new track, start loading stuff in, start messing with it. That's a to-do list. Work on music is in the to-do list. Work on music is a life goal. When you get into that mode of not being able to focus on the work, not being able to stick with the work, three reasons to procrastinate. Number one, the thing that you're doing is so boring that anything else is more interesting. Uh, number two, it's amorphous. You don't have your head wrapped around it. So it's very easy to just kind of throw your hands up and do something else. And number three is you know exactly what you need to do, but you have made it so not fun that you're not doing it. That's the reason I think that people procrastinate on art all the time. Thing that they want to do, uh, they want to do it. They've just made it suck. So therefore they don't do it. Maybe they've made it suck because they put this unfair pressure on themselves. Maybe they've made it suck because they have these uh, attachments to whatever the outcome should be. Maybe they've made it suck because uh, they're stupid, but they think their work should be smart. Any of that stuff could be a reason for it. And so hopefully that gets at it. But three really basic strategies, leverage, you can use negative or positive leverage. I use negative, works better for me. Reward and uh, clarity. Let's listen to a seven inch and wrap this live up. So we're gonna play out on this lungfish seven inch. Super good. Gold vinyl or transparent yellow vinyl. It was put out on their own label. I'm pretty sure that this is kind of the point at which lungfish changed from the lungfish of rainbows from Adams pass and stow into the lungfish of sound and time and the unanimous hour. I've been listening to the seven inch daily. It's from 1994. Beautiful by Dan Hicks painting on the cover, maybe. This 
productive during this time 
of um, social isolation, self-quarantining, and yellow vinyl. Not at all. Are you fine with it, or are you like anxious about not being productive? What do you got here? I was only gonna do one thing, but let's see if this record's any good. You're anxious as fuck about it? So why aren't you getting anything done? Is it is it because you're freaking out about coronavirus? Your shows are canceled. Everything, life is canceled, my friend. Or public life is canceled. Got it. So this has gotten to weird chat. Oh, this vinyl is so thick. We're gonna listen to this Okara record and we're gonna find out if it's still good. Or if it's good at all, because I don't even remember what the hell it sounds like. Like this so far. All right, that's cool. Well, oh, uh, Jacob, I can we can take a, a couple more minutes here. Uh, if there's anything more specific that you want to jump into in terms of your procrastination. benefit of you, America. This record is freaking great. Okara. Okay. Uncoated 12 inch, that's unusual. Feels really nice. All right, then uh, we're gonna listen to this song, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna jump off of this, and then Jacob, you can watch this video, and then uh, I will edit the other one, so it'll be a nice little, hopefully, five or six minute chunk of info. And I may or may not have done this, but if I didn't send you my phone number, I'll just send you my phone number, and you can text me if you ever have a question. This record's effing great. We'll play out on this record. Thanks, man. The other thing I'll say is there's tons of um, the MVA studio vlogs, which there's a link to the most recent one. I don't know if it addresses um, procrastination so much, but there's a lot of MVA studio vlogs that are like, they're unfortunately really long because I have no judgment. Um, but I feel like their procrastination issue comes up with them a lot. Um, in episode 100 is gonna be kind of this like master class on creative workflow geared towards design but applicable to other stuff but uh, I have to edit like three hours of video and that's gonna suck John what's up dude I was gonna jump off but now you're on and now I'm happy we're listening to Okara uh, mid 90s cult Canadian band Math Rocky. It's a dope. Oh. Yeah, I don't know. Let's see, how much time we got left here? You got a little bit of time? John, if there's anything that you think I should talk about, hit me up. And we will do it. Besides grooming my beard. Otherwise, there should be another episode of the world's worst radio show. I really like the package on this record. Silver ink, black, and then the hole in the back. Yeah, 
yeah. This episode is good. Um, I suppose it's not playing yet, but when it's playing, it's pretty focused and content rich. I think it takes about five minutes to get into like the real content. It's just five minutes to listen to music, and then we talk about procrastination. I'm feeling this record. This is in the cell pile. I think it's coming out of the cell pile. Let me tell you an awesome story. This is a Le Corbusier book that I bought for $2 and I sold for $81. I'm very happy about that. flipping goes on in my life. There, I'm like really lazy. I'm not lazy. I shouldn't. I don't know why I say I'm lazy. That bookshelf right there is nothing but vintage art and photography and design books that I need to list on my Discogs. And the top half of that shelf the top half of that shelf. Out of my mind. All right. I think it's time for me to wrap it up. Um, so I'm going to sign off. John, uh, hit me up because I definitely got a lot of time to talk on the phone with you. Thanks for watching. Uh, I try to do this every weekday, 4 p.m. Central Standard Time. Send a question if you got it. <laughs>